Hello and welcome to Nithranya YouTube channel. You're watching another episode of the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Berec and today we're going to learn how to play a beautiful tile laying game called Cascadia. First, place all these wildlife tokens in the cloth bag and shuffle them well. Then shuffle these habited tiles and randomly choose 20 tiles per player in the game, plus 3 more. Then you can put all the remaining tiles back in the box, they will not be used in the game. Shuffle all the tiles that will be in the game and place them near the reach of all players. You can either create several smaller stacks or one large stack, it's up to you. Sort these scoring cards by their type and randomly choose one card from each stack. Place them in the center of the play area and for a first game it's recommended to use the scoring cards with this A letter in the bottom right corner. Give one random starter habited tile to each player and again return all the unused starter tiles back in the box, they will not be used in the game. Then reveal four habited tiles from any of the face down stacks and place them face up in the center of the play area. After that, start drawing the wildlife tokens from the cloth bag and place them in the exact same order next to these habited tiles, creating pairs of wildlife token and a habited tile. Randomly determine the starting player and we're ready to play. In Cascadia, players take turns starting with the randomly selected first player and then continuing in a clockwise direction until the end of the game. On your turn, you will choose one of the combinations of a habitat tile and a wildlife token and place them into your environment. Your environment is the arrangement of all the tiles and tokens in front of you. At the end of your turn, replace the chosen tile with the new tile from the face down stacks and draw one random wildlife token from the cloth back. After that, it's the next player's turn. The game ends at the end of the player's turn if that player has to place a new habited tile and a new wildlife token and there are no more habited tiles available. After that you will proceed directly to final scoring. Since there are exactly 20 habited tiles per player, each player will have exactly 20 turns. On your turn you have to choose one combination of a habited tile and a wildlife token. You can choose any combination you want. And after choosing that combination, you will place the tile and the token into your environment. Now, before you make a selection, if all four wildlife tokens are the same, they are automatically wiped, so set them aside and draw four new wildlife tokens, again creating the pairs of habitat tiles and wildlife tokens. If you would draw four same wildlife tokens, wipe them again and draw the new ones, and so on and so forth. Only after that, return the tokens that were set aside back into the cloth bag. If three of those wildlife tokens are the same, once per your turn, you may wipe those as well, and draw three new ones one by one. Remember, you can only do this once per your turn, so in this situation, you would not be able to wipe these tokens again. Normally, you have to choose the combination of a given habitat tile and a wildlife token. However, if you have any of these nature tokens in your personal supply, you can return one of them to the general supply and choose any of the habitat tiles and any wildlife token. Then you place them into your environment using the standard rules. You also replace the habitat tile and the wildlife token using the standard rules. You can also use one of those nature tokens, returning it to the general supply, to wipe any number of these wildlife tokens. You can use the nature tokens this way any number of times on your turn. When placing the new tile into your environment, it has to be adjacent to at least one of the existing habitat tiles. The adjacent terrain tiles don't have to match, but if they do, it will increase the scores at the end of the game. Once placed, the habitat tiles may never be moved and you may never place the habitat tile on top of another tile. After placing the habitat tile, you may place the wildlife token, you may only place it on empty habitat tiles and in addition the habitat tile must show the type of the wildlife token that you want to place there. You don't have to place the token on the tile you just add to your environment, 
you may place it on any other legal tile. If for any reason there is no legal habitat tile for your wildlife token, it has to be returned back to the cloth bag. You may even choose voluntarily not to place the wildlife token into your environment and return it back to the cloth bag, even if you do have some legal spaces for it. Finally, when you place a wildlife token on the keystone tile, which is a tile with this white arrow, take one nature token from the general supply and add it to your personal supply. If at the end of your turn, you have to replace a habitat tile and a wildlife token and there are no more habitat tiles available, the game ends immediately. There are two major scoring sections, one of them is scoring these wildlife cards and then you will score points for the sizes of your habitat types. Each scoring card has a description at the bottom of the card which describes how the card is scored, but in general bears score points if you have pairs of bear wildlife tokens together. So that means they have to be like this, not surrounded by any other bear token. This one doesn't score anything and in case this token would be over here, this group would also score no points because it's a group of three bear tokens instead of just two. Then based on the number of these pairs you create, you score victory points. If you create one pair, you score four victory points. If you have two pairs, 11 victory points and so on and so forth. Then elks score victory points if they're in a specific formation. In this example, you have to have them in lines. Then based on the size of those groups, you score depicted number of victory points. So here we have two lines of two elks. Then foxes score victory points based on the number of unique animals adjacent to those foxes, including other foxes. However, the largest number of victory points is five. Here we have this fox scoring five victory points for one, two, three, four, five different animals. This one scores three victory points for three different types of animals adjacent to that fox, including other foxes. To score the victory points for hawks, you have to have them isolated in your environments. We have four isolated hawks here, that is 11 victory points. And finally, salmons score victory points if they are adjacent to each other and they form a line, and that line may be of any shape or form. So here we have the line of four salmons and there is another one here. But keep in mind, as the symbology indicates, no other salmon tokens may be around. So you would not be allowed to have the salmon token over here. Then after scoring the wildlife cards, score the victory points for your habitat types. For each type, look at the largest contiguous area of that habitat type and score one victory point for each tile. So here we have mountains, which spread across three different tiles. Here we also have mountains on three adjacent tiles. So you would score three victory points from mountains. You only score one largest area. The next one is forest. And here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven tiles that's seven victory points for forests. Here we have six tiles of prairies, that would be six victory points, five tiles of wetlands and four tiles of oceans. Now compare these scores with other players in the game and you would score additional bonus points which you score in this section of this scoring pad. If you play a solo game, you score two bonus victory points for each habitat where your largest area is worth seven victory points or more. In a two-player game, the player with the higher number of victory points in every given habitat type will score two victory points, the second player will score no victory points. If they're tied, both players score one victory point. In three and a four-player games, the player with the highest number of victory points in a specific area would score three victory points, the player with the second highest number would score one victory point. The third player would score nothing. If two players are tied with the highest number of victory points in a given area, they both score two victory points. The third player scores no bonus victory points. In case three or four players would be tied with the highest number of victory points, they would all score one bonus point. And if there's one player with the highest number, that player scores three victory points. Other players score nothing. Finally, for each unused nature tokens, score one victory point, then tally up all your scores, 
and whoever has the highest number is the winner. Cascadia can also be played in a solo mode and there are only two differences to the standard game. First, set up the game for two players, so take the number of habited tiles which corresponds to the two players in the game. However, only take one starter habited tile because the other virtual player will not build any environment. And then the second difference is when you replace the tiles and tokens in the display. After you take your turn, discard the tile and a token which is furthest away from the stacks. These are removed from the game, so don't place the token back into the cloth bag. You can pretend that these were taken by the virtual player. Then slide the existing tiles and tokens to the right and draw the new tiles and the new wildlife tokens. Follow the same rules even if you use the nature token and take the wild combination of tile and the token. Again, remove the tile and the token which are furthest away from the stacks. Slide the remaining tiles and tokens and replace them with the new tiles and new tokens. So that's it, that's how you play Cascadia. If you would have any questions or comments, I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. My name is Branislav Berec, you've been watching Game in a Nutshell and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash